When someone is considering their first Swiss mechanical watch, there frankly are many places to look. Though if we are trying to simplify things down to the most attainable Swiss watch on the market, the answer would be the Swatch System 51. This series of watches has become an outlier more than by price alone, yet it is still a complicated proposition. And in this video, we analyze the System 51 deeper and ultimately try to give some sense to it and whether or not it's any good. Now, when you hear the name Swatch nowadays, we find ourselves immediately jumping to visualize their now notable brand collaborations. Before there ever was a moon swatch though, the brand first became known in the 1980s, being at the forefront of restabilizing the broader Swiss watch industry with one lighthearted and borderline outrageous design after the other, being a much needed gateway for many into the world of watch collecting in the process. Key to Swatch's success at the brand's onset was its fully automated mass production model, made it possible by newly developed quartz calibers that utilized 51 components as opposed to many that had 90 to 100 in most quartz calibers of the day. Cheap, fashionable, and very much on the trend for the time, Swatch's colorful plastic watches became a cultural phenomenon, with millions being sold per year. This rise paved the way for the formation of the mighty Swatch Group, a conglomerate comprised of brands at nearly every price across the industry. Now, while Swatch had dabbled with mechanical timekeeping before, the System 51 presented something different when it was announced in 2013, aiming to bring the high efficiency mass production model that enabled the brand's incredible success with quartz power timekeeping in the 1980s to the world of mechanical watches in the 2010s. The System 51 stats were impressive. Constructed in a purpose-built facility in the Swiss Jura Mountains, produced completely by machine from only 51 components, all while providing an impressive 90 hour power reserve. The earliest examples of the watches utilizing the caliber were also surprisingly inexpensive at around $150. For many enthusiasts, this sounded all well and good. However, the burgeoning legions of watch enthusiasts of the time found themselves puzzled as the System 51's more disposable approach contradicted a core premise of why many came to appreciate watchmaking in the first place. Now on display for this video, we have a $175 System 51C in a plastic case. So let's begin first looking at the watch generally, and then I'll conclude with sharing some of my final thoughts on the System 51, as it's not necessarily a straightforward concept. Now we will obviously get to the movement, but what makes a swatch a swatch is how they feel on the wrist. In this instance, this plastic case swatch feels very much as you'd expect, wearing extremely light and relatively comfortable because of its silicone rubber strap and simple buckle. It can be mildly awkward despite its weight for those that have smaller wrists, including myself, given how it rests on the wrist and how long that strap tail is going to be. As another note, swatch utilizes a special lug attachment that won't allow you to swap straps to anything other than another swatch option. Measuring 42 millimeters in diameter, 13.3 millimeters thick, and a 50.3 millimeter lug to lug, the System 51 is a larger watch by 2023 standards. Still, given its material and its quirky presentation, it manages to work on more people than it probably would otherwise if it was more of a traditional approach. At three, the push-pull crown is ever so slightly recessed into the case, allowing for a minimal 30 meters of water resistance and can be a bit difficult to get a hold of to pull to the second and third positions. An acrylic crystal keeps watch over a dial format that speaks to some of the earliest System 51 references while still calling back to Swatch's earliest quartz watches. Set over a deep blue metallic central surface, offering a hint of a sunray effect, the dial's elements are printed as you'd expect, with an array of smaller circles meant to call out certain aspects of the caliber on the flip side. In this case, the red dots mimic the position of six of the caliber's 19 jewels, with the gold tone dots showing where the bridges have been soldered together. The indices are white printed circles, meaning legibility wasn't at the top of the list, but the polished metallic hour and minute hands, as well as the white stick second hand, do a good enough job in being able to indicate the time. Some form of luminescent material is utilized across the dial and the hands, but the overall effect frankly isn't that great. At three, a circular date aperture reveals a color matching date disc in a way that complements the rest of the dial, with simple dial text topping off the design. Now I'm guessing the movement is what you are most interested in hearing more about, as this is the System 51 after all. Now to keep all of this into context, this particular watch cost us $175, a mere $25 more than the debut price of this model family a decade ago. Now given the massive jumps in watch pricing in recent years, the fact that this automatic Swiss made watch can still be had for less than $200 at full retail price is still something unique and worthy of note. 
In my experience of owning System 51s and having this example for a few weeks already, and also having several members of the team wear it for an extended period of time, we haven't had any issues with its operation. We've also tested this watch's accuracy across five different positions on a time grapher, revealing that it was running at plus two to plus nine seconds per day on average across those five positions, which is very hard to fault for a watch in this price category. That said, the movement certainly shows its price in areas. Winding and setting at the crown does lack an elevated feel. The rotor is very noisy, and it can be felt on the wrist rotating around given the lightweight case. And also the movement does lack the feature of hacking seconds or stop seconds. But probably most controversial is that this watch caliber was not created with serviceability in mind. On partial display through the exhibition case back, the movement's bridges are created in an anti-magnetic alloy that combines copper, nickel, and zinc, in this case, coated black. The rotor encompasses the entirety of the case back opening, printed with a linear pattern that obscures the view of the components lying underneath, apart from a very slight view of the mainspring, bridges, and balance when viewed at certain resting angles. To call out its most impressive capability, a 90 hour power reserve. That is great for any automatic watch at any price and absolutely crazy for a watch of this price, even considering the three hertz rate of its oscillation. So as I mentioned, my thoughts on the System 51 are very complicated. I have a belief that a watch shouldn't have to cost thousands of dollars in order to enjoy it. And it would be unreasonable to expect someone to plunge into the deep end of watch collecting when they're just getting started with this journey. Generally, it is a gradual step-by-step -step process that involves learning what you like and then what you don't. The premise behind Swatch and generally the System 51 seems to intersect with these ideas and was an important part of the recipe that ultimately led to the brand's rise in the 1980s. So often we forget how crucial the gateway watch is to ignite the passion that eventually leads us to be an enthusiast slash collector. Swatch has been doing that for many people over generations, all while being pieces you can go back to time and time again when you tire of the never ending cycle of seriousness that permeates throughout many parts of this industry. Watches like the System 51 certainly aren't going to blow you away when it comes to their build quality, but they are relatively inexpensive and serve as a suitable option for a segment of the watch buyers out there who are looking for the familiar swatch looks with an automatic caliber on the inside. And for that, I really appreciate what these watches represent. Yet here's the number one issue I have with them. Watch collecting in the 21st century is a romantic idea led by emotion more than logic. Mass production and disposable products are pervasive throughout nearly every industry we come across. When we hear the story of a watchmaker disassembling a mechanical movement for service to live on for another decade, or hear a story of an heirloom piece getting passed down, it resonates and further justifies our stance that maybe we aren't crazy for collecting these little objects. With the System 51's hermetically sealed case and the absence of the traditional watchmaking assembly process, whether justified or not, some will find the watch is a different proposition altogether that has its place, though fails to connect in the same manner. Is that a rational stance? I'm not sure, but rational reasoning probably isn't a reason why we're even talking about this subject to begin with. But all right, guys, that's my take on the System 51. It's kind of a conflicting take. I like what this watch represents in some ways, but then there's also this opposing idea where it's not necessarily built to last. And that's an element of watches that I've come to really appreciate. But what is your take on the System 51? Are you an owner of one of these watches? What do you think? Do you like them? Do you not like them? I'd like to see some of your comments down below because I know this is an involved subject for a watch that is under $200 and is kind of a key pillar in affordable watchmaking. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that. And we're getting closer to a million subscribers. So if you can help us get there, that would be absolutely amazing. So thank you very much. Also, if you're in the market for a watch, check out teddybaltasar.com, full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. And how we're able to fund all of our productions here is through selling watches. So if you're in the market for a watch, we'd love to have your business. It allows us to keep doing what we're doing here. And we love what we do. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.